If you are anything like me, then you probably have your 3D printer in the garage. If you are also anything like me, you probably do other projects besides 3D printing that produces dust. Today we are going to be looking at my DIY enclosure for my Ender 3 S1 Pro. Now, there are a few reasons that I went ahead and decided to go ahead and build an enclosure. And yes, I know, I know, the newer 3D printers come with enclosures, the majority of them anyways. However, after printing for quite a bit of time now, I have noticed that there are some things that affect print quality that is affected by external factors. And those external factors are kind of what I'm gonna talk about, uh, as well as the actual enclosure itself how I built it and some of the features it has and does it actually do its job um, that I intended it to do. But first, the three reasons that I decided to build a DIY enclosure for my 3D printer is for the temperature control, dust prevention, and just the simple fact of noise pollution when trying to do other things in the area where your 3D printer is doing its printing. Now, aside from the actual dust protection that it provides, I would say the biggest reason that I decided to do this was because of temperature regulation. Since my printer is in the garage and I potentially want to get more printers that are in the garage, uh, the temperature is something that definitely regulates on a regular basis. Whether I'm printing from dusk to dawn or the time that it takes for temperature to drop in the evening to morning, or I'm printing overnight, like I just mentioned, all these different times, uh, the temperatures can shift drastically in the garage where the printing is taking place. And I'm sure like a lot of you, you probably do the same thing. And if you have an exposed 3D printer, such as I do, and you don't have one with an enclosure already, you may have noticed that there are build quality issues that happen um, throughout the actual object that you're printing. And a big part of this could be to the temperature of the external atmosphere that is causing the flaws in the actual build. And really one of the biggest side effects of this is bed adhesion. If you print and you have a relatively tall print and you are almost done with the print come morning time and the temperatures drop 10 or 15 degrees externally, you may find that it cools and detaches by itself making that awesome spaghetti that we all know and love. Additionally, in the winter months, I have had issues with layer adhesion. Um, the layers would not adhere properly. And again, I got the spaghetti or uh, the, the print was just deformed and it wasn't the quality that I had wanted. And finally, I would say the third biggest uh, reason that I built this was to cut down on the noise pollution from the Ender 3 S1 Pro. This again varies based on the printer that you actually have and you may not have any problem with the noise that it offers. However, if I was sitting in a room with headphones on, I could hear the printer over top of the headphones as to what I was listening to in a video or music or whatnot. And if you are in your garage building, that noise can just become irritating over time and that's something that I wanted to cut down on. So to move on to the actual enclosure itself, I am no build expert, just like I am no 3D printing expert. However, I am good enough where I can put something together and it be functional, even if it doesn't look pretty. And that's kind of what I did with this enclosure. On top of that, I use really cheap materials such as pine and other materials, uh, wood glue, that really aren't that expensive and you can do this for pretty cheap. I will say the only material that I really had to go out of the way to purchase um, on Amazon was the acrylic sheets that I used to create the transparent, I guess, glass effect on the actual printer so you can see on the inside. And I will link that in the description below if you guys are trying to build a DIY enclosure for yourselves. These sheets come in a pack of five, uh, I believe they are uh, 24 by 36 inches per sheet and I got the whole pack of five for about $35 being by far the most expensive thing that I used on this whole build. They are easy enough to cut with a razor blade uh, and all you have to do is measure out, cut, and put them in your project. For wood, I already have a decent amount of wood tools even though I'm not a professional. These are basic tools that you can get at Home Depot and they're not super expensive. Really, if you have a table saw and a drill, 
and a circular saw where you can cut the piece to length that you need and then use the table saw to rip off the edges. Uh, that's really all that I did. I probably used two boards um, at, I think they were about $10 a piece. And I was able to build the entirety of the structure from basically those two boards. I think the fanciest piece on this whole thing is the pocket holes that I drilled into the actual board itself that bound them together. Um, that way I could create a thick uh, base and a thick floor for the printer to sit on. That way there wasn't a bunch of vibrations and it would be sturdy when I was conducting prints. So as you can see, I've added two more Ender 3 S1 Pros since I originally built this. I also added this sweet little 3D printed latch. I'll put the link in the description down below. I found it on Thingiverse. It also acts as sort of like a pressure seal to seal this, this door to the frame. Uh, so it keeps all the temperature and the hot air in the enclosure. I also 3D printed the hinges that allow the door to open and close. And I printed three of these and they've been working great so far. Um, I just printed at 100% density and they've been doing pretty good. As of now, the plan is to add another structure up top right here and another structure below. Um, more like just adding more of these, these plexiglass sheets and then another enclosure on top and then closing in this one on the bottom. The only reason I didn't do this from the very beginning was because I found these Ender 3 S1 Pros on eBay for an extremely cheap price through Creality's uh, manufacturer refurbished deal. And I did not expect to get these when I did. So I did not add the enclosure on the top and the bottom like I did on the middle. I have to apologize for not doing any wire management whatsoever. Uh, I definitely am going to clean up all these wires. As you can see, it runs down from the top one and then the one in the middle and then all the ones down on the bottom. I would also like to add Raspberry Pis to all three of these so that I can operate them remotely, uh, which is also gonna create more wires. So there's definitely a plan for better wire management. I'm sure as I continue to work on this thing and add more stuff to it, as well as do the top and the bottom enclosure. Uh, I'll make another video and kind of give you guys what it looks like after all of those things are done to it. If anyone has any questions or suggestions on what I could add to it to make it better, uh, just shoot it down in the comment section below. If you've watched this far, thank you so much. Um, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so that you can get a notification every time I upload new videos. Thank you guys again for watching and we'll see you in the next one.